Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to go through the JSON APIs and AJAX challenges on FreeCodeCamp. So JSON APIs help us get data for our front-end applications, and there's, way we, there's ways we can actually fetch that data, and that's what we're going to be going through today. So let's check out the first lesson on this. Handle click events with JavaScript using the onClick property. So I guess first they want us to be able to control a button. And for this challenge, all we have to do is add this function in to this code right here. ID of get message, and that should be good to go. Let's try it out. Yep, change text with click events. All we want to do is change the text with this click event by adding this code in right here. So it'll get the elements by class name, the message class, so the P right here, and it will change its text content to here's the message. So when I click that, it changes it. Stride out. Yep. Get JSON with the JavaScript XML HTTP request method. So that's what this is. It's a regular JavaScript method that will help us request data. So this is actually pretty useful. And I believe all we have to do is copy this code over here and try it out. And it looks like we got all the data that we needed in JSON format. They went to freecodecamp.org slash JSON slash cats.json. So I wonder if I can go there myself and see this data. So yeah, I can go to freecodecamp.org slash JSON slash cats.json and I can see all the JSON that they got with this request. So that's kind of cool. This data is the same as the stuff that's showing up here. And basically, yeah, we had to open a Git request then send it then do this onload thing and then parse it. And then we could actually put it into our document. But yeah, let's try this out. Yep. There we go. Get JSON with the JavaScript fetch method. So this is the method that I really like to use. I would rather stay away from the XML re request method and instead use fetch. It's just much simpler in my opinion. So all we have to do is probably paste this over and try it out. And it does the same exact thing, except I think it's a little bit easier to understand. We get this response and then we get the data on it and then we can start using the data after we json.stringify it. And this uses promises, that's why it uses this dot then. And promises are asynchronous, which means that it takes time for this data to actually get here. And that's why we have to do this dot then, and then wait, and then we can actually use the data after, after that. So yeah, that's why it's like that. And let's try running it. Yep, there we go. Access the JSON data from an API. So now we actually want to go into this JSON data that we that we parsed out of this XML request. So to do that, we can just do JSON and then grab its codenames array. So dot codenames, and then we want to grab the second value in the codenames array, so it'd be an index of one. And we just want to console log it. Let's try getting message codenames array. Oh, for the cat with the ID of two, grab that one. So we have to do JSON, JSON of ID, or JSON of index two dot codenames of one. Try that. There we go. Now we're getting low key right here. So yeah, what we did was we grabbed the second value in this array, which would, or the second index, which is this one, this object. And then we did dot codenames, which grabbed this array right here. And then we grabbed the first part or this first index in that array, which is low key. And that's how we got Loki here. So let's try running this. Yep, there we go. Convert JSON data to HTML. So we kind of want to do what it's telling us to do here. So I'll just copy this over. And we have two HTML things here, so I'll get rid of that. And so we're looping over our array and we're making each one a div of class cat. And then we're putting some stuff into it. Let's see what uh, comes out. Looks pretty decent to me. So I believe that's what they wanted. They're doing object.keys to get the keys and then the value as well. So for each one, they're giving us a key, which would be like this image link, and then the, the value, which is the actual link. And let's try this out. Yep, there we go. Render images from data sources. So I guess we'll just add this code in to make it have an image. So when I get this message, we should see the images, which looks like it is doing, because we're doing this image tag, and we're doing the source equals the value.image link and then the alt text equals the alt text that it gave us in this thing right here, the image link and the alt text. So let's try this one out. Yep, pre-filter JSON to get the data we need. This is done with the filter method. So all they want us to do here is add in this code here to get rid of the cat with the ID of one. So that just got rid of this first one right here. Kind of weird, but whatever, let's try it out. Get geolocation data to find a user's GPS coordinates. That's done with uh, this code right here. So I'll just add this into our script tag. And we call the navigator thing. And right now it's asking because I just put this in here. 
and I guess I'll block it. So yeah, Navigator is something built into JavaScript, I guess. I actually didn't know this, but uh, now I do. And we can get our geolocation by doing this. If they click allow, then we can get their data and then do stuff with it. And it's actually pretty simple to do. Just navigator.geolocation. Then we get the current position. And then we do a function on it to be able to display it to the user. And because I blocked it, it's not showing anything. But if I allowed, it would probably show up. So let's try this out. Yep, there we go. Post data with the JavaScript XML HTTP request method. That's done with this code right here, which looks like a lot. But once we get a systematic approach for it, then it's really not that much. And also, I don't really like to use XML HTTP request. I'd rather use fetch. So I don't really like that FreeCodeCamp is using this kind of request, but uh, it's not my decision, I guess. So we'll just roll with it. And basically, we open up a post request, which means that we're posting to the server, which means we're creating data on the server. We're not just getting it, we're actually creating something on it, onto the data. And we're setting the header to be application JSON, which is correct. We want to be sending JSON. Oh, and this body is what we're sending. So we're doing xhr.send and we're sending this body, which is our username with a suffix of love cats, loves cats. So that we're, that's what we're actually sending to the server. So let's try this. And there we go. We sent it and then it gave us a response back. So we sent the, this and then it took that and then it gave it gave us a response of Landon loves cats back. And that was put into this server response variable. And it did xhr.response to get that and then it parsed it. And then we were able to display it onto the document. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I think that fetch is a lot easier than this, but uh, I guess this is another way to do it that I didn't know about, which is kind of cool too. So let's try this one out. And it looks like it worked. And it looks like we're already done with the JSON API and AJAX challenges. Next up, we have the data visualization projects, which is making a bar chart, a scatter plot graph, a heat map, a chloropleth map, and a tree map diagram. And we're going to be using probably D3, the D3 library for this stuff, which I have not really used before besides the challenges that we did. So that should be interesting for me to learn as well. And I'll see what I can come up with for those and what data I'll use. Probably some free code camp data that they have. But yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you like this video and comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.